bar à cocktail de Paris. Je suis accompagnée de Alex, le manager du lieu. Je vais lui poser quelques petites questions. So Alex, who are you and where are we today? So we're in the Marine, in the third, in Paris, which is the uh, where we are in Little Red Door. Uh, and I am the manager for the last year or so. Uh, although the last half a year doesn't really count uh, with Covid. And uh, how would you describe Little Red Door? It is an escape. It's uh, a little uh, haven for people who love cocktails, uh, like to try something different, like to try something a bit weird and wonderful. Uh, but it ultimately is a, a welcoming bar. So Little Red Door was founded by uh, two gentlemen initially, Tim and Dotan. Uh, Tim is a, a French gentleman from the south of France, has a strong family connection to the spirits industry and the, the cartel bar world. He actually started in, uh, like I think most people, in the Paris bartender community at ECC, the Experimental Cocktail Club. Uh, and Dotan was a gentleman uh, also within the bars and restaurants world. They were both looking to open a new venue within the Marais uh, that would uh, follow the trend that ECC had started with kind of bringing uh, an international approach to cocktails that Paris really hadn't seen 10, 8 years ago. So with that, initially Little Red Door was founded as the, an escape, this little hideaway. The, the door is inspired by that kind of idea of Alice in Wonderland, of a little door on one side that as you can see is much bigger on the inside. Um, and it wasn't specifically uh, meant to look as it is now like most businesses i guess uh originally there was a lot more of a focus on uh ever-changing art shows there was live music there was uh a, a much bigger uh kitchen involved and as little red door kind of made a name for itself it was really for the cocktails and after about four or five years this kind of took over everything uh, we did. We became one of the most regularly featured bars in Paris in 50 Best. We became uh, one of the most widely publicized places in things like Vanity Fair and in the brochures you even have in the magazines uh, on, the, on the airplanes. Because of that, we became a, a, huge, a huge tourist hotspot uh, and that meant the bar became more and more focused and more well known for its uh, conceptual menus uh, that we do so once a year we we create a single menu and this um, is a focal point for the experience it uh, I think it's probably one of the most unique things about what we do a little red door is that it is one of the few bars where it is so purely about the drink experience you you come in and you're presented with this beautiful kind of piece of art which is the the kind of the design of the menu and you you escape for five ten minutes into this world of what if this subject what if this idea was a drink uh, some of them are a little bit more conceptual than others and that makes them a little bit harder or easier to approach as a guest but ultimately the main idea for them is to be fun and to escape whatever you're doing whether you're on holiday in Paris or whether you live here and you've been here for 20 years is to give you a little escape into this experience and turn your mind off to everything else outside of the world for one two hours uh, and have a, a drink like no other so yeah this is uh, the idea of the red door how is it different from many other bars it's a very international bar um, in its style uh, compared to a lot of the bars in paris it uh, looks and feels a, a little bit more similar to the bars you'll find in new york and london and singapore and we try and match those standards and also follow the same uh, trends and attitudes that you find 
outside of Paris. Little Red Door is part of Bonamine Group. Uh, this is the name of the company. We also have a restaurant called Bonamine. Um, and this is uh, a small group at the moment. We have three venues. We have Little Red Door in the Marais. We have Lulu White up in Pigalle. And we have Bonamy near Saint-Denis. Uh, Strasbourg Saint-Denis. And we... Uh, each bar is distinctly different but has the same ethos. So, uh, Little Red Door and Lulu White, you could kind of see them as uh, complements to one another. Little Red Door is more aimed at the earlier evening between kind of 8 to 11, 12 o'clock for people having a drink before or after a meal. It's m completely table service and it's focused on that kind of service style. Uh, and the experience. We spend a lot of time explaining the drinks and the concepts and the processes we go through. Lulu White is the place that you go after you've had a couple of those drinks. Uh, you go and you have uh, a bit of a dance, a party, and it, it is first and foremost an experience of, of New Orleans and, and fun. Uh, Bonhomme is both of the attitudes within Lulu White and the Red Door that we started in a restaurant. It is an idea of, of fun but not at the compromise of quality. Something we always try to do with Little Red Door and Lulu White is in their, both, in their own ways, they both have an exciting and dynamic atmosphere, but they don't compromise on the quality at any point with that. That is the, the challenge of this consistency. Bonamy is that, but adding in a huge focus on natural wines, Mediterranean produce, and big sharing dishes. So Bonamy is the big, most striking aspect of it is there are no individual tables. There are four large sharing tables that uh, before COVID, big groups of people would share. You would get to know the people sat next to you and everybody would share a main dish. Uh, and it's kind of welcoming or uh, embracing this style of interaction with everybody and breaking down. And, and again, it's just an experience in that way. Like most of our venues as well, later on in the evening, it does get quite, uh, loud and excited and it's just a authentic bit of Parisian fun, I guess. Um, you, say, you say that uh, according to their nationalities, customers are quite different? Yes, um, I think anybody who works in an international city like Paris or London or, or New York or Singapore, you, it's funny, cocktail bars are n not many people's natural environment only maybe America really has a kind of a culture around a cocktail bar so everybody acts differently within them and it, the space especially place called like Little Red Door where you have people from all over the world coming whenever they come to Paris to, to the bar and people behave differently when they come in and you really start to see the the differences in in attitude whether people realize it or not there's some conscious assumptions about where you sit and why you go to a bar really come to the front uh, being an international cocktail bar, we have a lot of Americans, like a lot of places in Paris, there are Americans everywhere. And Americans will always want to sit at the bar. Without even asking you or saying hello, they will walk out the bar unless you can find a very good reason they do not want to sit anywhere else because whether it's part of their history or just part of their cocktail service, it is the best seat in the house. It is the focus of everything. They want to see the person making the drink. They want to talk to the person making the drink. Uh, and they want to talk to other people. And that's obviously, you know, like any cocktail bar, the bar is a place to meet new people and talk to the person sat next to you. What is quite funny in Paris especially is, I think probably one of the funniest things about Paris as a city, is the mixture of Parisians with tourists. And Parisians especially, but I think in French, general French people go out to socialize with friends and they will spend an entire evening talking over one glass of wine but talking for four or five hours and they don't really want to talk to the person serving them it's a big shock a lot of people have when they come to Paris with cafe cultures is why does the waiter not come back I want something more the waiters don't stand there chatting away with you telling you their name and giving you their their life story they come they ask what you want they give it to you and they leave and they get a tip at the end and that's what they want and Parisians often don't want to sit at the bar and they don't want to talk to the person next to them. It's not because they're not friendly, it's because they, they very rarely go to a bar on their own and sit there. They want to talk to the person that they came with. So they'll often want to sit in the corner and so you'll often see this dynamic of you'll try and guess where someone's from and, and you can kind of tell their attitude by where they are. 
And all of this is quite funny because as a British person, British people generally just apologise when they come in and they will say, don't worry, I'll sit wherever you want, just give me a seat if that's okay, and if it's not, I'll leave, I'll come back. So. What is the 50 best and what does it uh, represent for you? So 50 Best is uh, an organization that uh, is similar in style to the likes of Michelin, but it works with bars and restaurants. And the idea initially was to highlight bars and restaurants that wouldn't fit into the style of service that Michelin originally did. Uh, and with the bars specifically, it is seen as the kind of the, the main authority on the best bars in the world at any given year. Uh, and for us, it's a, it's a sign of quality it's a reassurance that we uh, that guests will come to and they will have uh, the quality experience they expect mm -hmm. um, personally for us as a bar it, it means pressure to every year try and be in the 50 best and we're fortunate of our eight years we've been in 50 best for seven of those um, but this is also exciting it's a, a challenge to try new things uh, and make sure that uh, what we do is valuable to the, the industry as well as our guests. And, uh, can you tell me what is uh, the most difficult uh, in your job? Uh, the most difficult thing uh, in my job is the consistency. Um, we serve uh, 7,000 of each drink on the menu over a year. We serve anywhere up to 500 drinks a night in a weekend. That's a lot for a small bar to do and with a small team to produce. And so the consistency for that every, every day, every week is incredible because you, you want to make sure every single guest has the best possible experience within that while serving as many guests as possible. Uh, for a week, for a month, it is a challenge. For a year, it is a, it is a real, real push. But it's the excitement of that, and then there's an excitement every year when we change our menu to, to really redefine what our offering is and how we go about it. So that would be the hardest, but also the most exciting part, I guess. Mm -hmm. Your favourite places uh, in Paris or in the world for cocktails? So my favourite place uh, in Paris would be the, the Cambridge, which is in the third here. It's just the most welcoming, most lovely place you can go to. Everything they do is beautiful. Or if I want to really feel like I'm in the Paris that you, you see in the films, I go to Cravan in the 16th. It's, uh, it's like someone drew a French I a dream uh, of a cocktail bar. It's so beautiful, so picturesque. In the world, uh, there are so many, but somewhere like the Savoy uh, in the, at the American bar, uh, somewhere like Happiness Forgets in East London, these kind of places. The service, that's the cocktail, it's the second part of all those experiences. It's the welcome, it's the service, it's the, the attention to detail that you feel. Um, I think that is what I really love more than most things. Your favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs>